the Shark Deck. Hello and welcome to Palace Entry Game, your host, Mark Francis. Royalist wondered about Harry being invited to the coronation. The quote, a source who told the Sunday Times, Right now he's holding a gun to their heads and nobody knows what will be acceptable to him as an appeasement. His goalposts are constantly shifting and the family is always going to question some of his versions of events. The theory is that reconciliation is the only way forward. The source said, It's going to take flexibility on all sides, but it can be done. It's fixable. It needs Harry over there, in the room with the King and Prince of Wales, a couple of other family members, some of his people he trusts who always had his back so he doesn't think he's being ambushed, someone like Elf, Edlaine Fox, Harry's former private secretary, and Christopher, Lord Guite, the late Queen's former private secretary, who advised the Sussexes. Both sides need to hold their hands up and admit we didn't get everything right and we got a lot wrong and we have to say to him we understand the pain you've been through, the King can do it. William is loyal to the throne and understands what needs to be done for the country. Not everyone here behaved well, but Harry's got to be able to sit down and say, we didn't behave well either. That takes a lot of academic flexibility, which Harry isn't great at. We've got to move on it and get it done by April. Then we need to get the wives in. The king needs a clear run for the coronation. A close friend of both William and Harry's believes a reconciliation is a must, telling the Times, the silence for now has been the right thing, but this is not going to go away. This has to be resolved and neutralized, so that when William has the top job, his brother isn't still sniping from the sidelines. I genuinely don't think this is the end of things. Harry simply cannot do without his brother. The former head of protection for the royal family, Di Davies, told The Telegraph that only a fool would reveal this kind of detail about the royal's inner sanctums. There is a reason Buckingham Palace never discusses any detail about its security operations, big or small, he told the newspaper. It would never expect someone with such an intimate knowledge of private royal residences to disclose such information. Insider recapped what Harry shared. For example, he discusses wine cellars at Highgrove House, the home of King Charles, where he and William spent most of their childhoods, where Camilla would keep expensive bottles of wine and absurd gifts from foreign governments and potentates. Elsewhere, he details the layout of Balmoral Castle, one of the late Queen's favourite residences, Clarence House, and how to find a room in Highgrove House nicknamed Club H, where he and William would hang out as teenagers. Davies calls the revelations problematic, potentially compromising for the royal family security operations. There have always been people who have tried to access parts of royal palaces, whether they are fixated individuals with mental health problems or terrorists. This information could prove very useful. Do we have a new royal on the scene? Royal watchers noticed that at the funeral of King Constantine, it was Lady Gabriella Windsor asked to represent the future king at the Metropolitan Cathedral in Athens. As with many European monarchies, branches get intertwined when it comes to relationships, so pay attention as there will be a quiz at the end. The Independent explains the tangled web. Lady Gabriella married financier Thomas Kingston in 2019. The intimate ceremony in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle was attended by several senior members of the royal family, including Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Harry. Her godfather, Constantine II, second cousin to King Charles III, died aged 82 at a private hospital in Athens on the 10th of January. The former and last king of Greece, whose first cousin was Prince Philip, was especially close to Charles, earning him the title of godparent to William. His close tie to the British royal family was later affirmed, as the Prince of Wales was himself named godfather to Constantine's first grandson, Constantine Alexius. Got all that? Neither do we. Palacentry, we're right back. The Guardian suggests that we make this spare the last. Kate Williams writes, Heirs' early deaths are a lot less common these days, so Britain should copy European royalty and let number twos work unimpeded. In the past, the spare was urgently required in case the heir died. Many monarchs have been spares. Henry VIII was the younger brother of Arthur, Prince of Wales, who died at the age of 15 from an illness, perhaps sweating sickness. Henry's daughter, Elizabeth I, was the second spare, younger half-sibling to Edward VI and Mary I, never intended to come near the throne. Victoria was the ultimate spare, the daughter of the fourth son of George III, only on the throne because all three elder sons died without living children. Harry's great-great-grandfather, George V, had been the younger brother 
Albert Victor, the eldest son, died in an influenza pandemic in 1892. Most recently, the Queen's father was number two after Edward VIII abdicated. But these days, early deaths from influenza are always in the case of the older cousin of Victoria, Princess Charlotte, dying in childbirth are rare. Now Harry argues the role of the spare is fodder by the press, a distraction in the game of journalists writing stories briefed by officers. And whatever Harry is or isn't, he isn't a singer. The Mirror took a look at the reactions to Harry's singing in the audiobook version of Spare. Harry is telling the story about Elton John performing Your Song at a tribute to Princess Diana and even sings a few lines. Fans have started sharing the singing on social media. One fan said, I just cringed so hard I think I sprained something. Another said, I can't tell if I hate it or if it's so bad it's good. Do I actually love it? And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your favourite shows. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intriguing. Good times.